That's the way we've always done it. That's a load of crap. Welcome to Hack Learning Uncut with your host, Mark Barnes, a man who's not afraid to say that grades lie, homework sucks, and traditional teachers should be suspended indefinitely. Now, strap yourself in, listen up, and let's Hack Learning. It's November, and it's holiday time. It's the end of November. Holiday time, and it's a time of year when a lot of people are saying their thank yous, which is great. A lot of people are getting ready for the new year and are reviewing the year that they've just come through, uh, both personally and professionally, and a lot of people are already making resolutions for the following year. You see a lot of blog posts uh, around education. And hear podcasts as well about, uh, you know, either looking back on where we've been and then saying, you know, where we want to go. And I may do one of, one of those episodes as well in the future, um, near future. But today, uh, in that spirit of holiday time and reflecting and thinking about where we're going, I just wanted to talk about a, a post I put on social media recently that's gotten a lot of feedback, and I think it speaks to these issues, you know, this idea of looking at what I do or what I have done and then looking ahead and saying, okay, what, if anything, am I going to do differently? So we're on cut today. So again, this is for our subscribers, and I appreciate you, and you get pinged on these podcast episodes, and you get them, and then hopefully share them out. Maybe head over to iTunes and leave a a review. We appreciate those. But uh, we don't uh, do show notes on these. We typically just talk and share it out. And again, the people who are subscribers get it automatically, so they never miss. So today on Uncut, again, I'm talking about a post that I shared recently. And it was pretty simple. And all it said was, no, I won't lecture, assign homework punish, or grade my students just because that's the way we've always done it. And I think it was a post I saw about grading or homework or something that got me thinking about this. And this is something I have presented on and I've I've talked about, I've written about, I've maybe even mentioned on this show before, this idea of that's the way we've always done it. You know, I think a lot of professions are stuck in that. But it feels to me like education, more than anything, is just rooted in this mentality. You know, people say, well, why why do you use workbooks in your classroom? Well, that's the way we've always done it. You know, every year I get these workbooks deposited in my room at the beginning of the year and I hand them out and we use them. That's just it. You know, why do you continue to give traditional homework? You know, the, the worksheets and the the summary assignments, things like that. Why do you keep doing it? Well, you know, how else would I do it? That's the way we've always done it. I, I've had young teachers tell me that's how I was taught. You know, in my pre-service days, in my student teaching, that's what uh, I was taught to do. Maybe I worked with someone and I emulate what they do. And that can be an entire different show. You know, the idea of pre-service learning and student teaching. And and there was a great topic on uh, Ed Chat on Twitter, hashtag Ed Chat, uh, which is on, ooh, I hope I don't get this wrong. I'm sorry for my friends at Ed Chat if I do. I think it's Tuesday nights at 7 Eastern time. But they were just talking about that. And, and I think there's a whole show there on what we do in pre-service because it, it comes back to this comment uh, or, or my post, you know, about that's the way we've always done it, is that a lot of teachers are saying, you know, this is what I was taught. That's That's what I do. So we'll circle back to that. But right now I want to stick with this because this was, I I shared this on Twitter and it was immediately shared and retweeted and liked, you know, hundreds of times. And then I decided to post it on my personal Facebook page and, uh, you know, which typically I keep for personal stuff. And a a post like this, I would normally put over on the Hack Learning page or in the Hack Learning Ambassadors group so we could talk about it. But I just decided to put it here because I have a lot of friends who are educators So again, I just wrote, no, I won't lecture, assign homework, punish, or grade my students just because that's the way we've always done it. 
I think a post like that is good to get people thinking. And the evidence was there on my Facebook page as dozens of replies started coming in. So, you know, one person says that mantra could leave many teachers unemployed. This is pushback. And, you know, in hack learning, we do pushback. So if you've seen a hack learning book, which I'm guessing you have, you know that in our chapters, we do the problem, the hack, what you can do tomorrow, because I think teachers need right now strategies. And then, though, we, we do a blueprint for full implementation. How do you build out that strategy, you know, and make it last? But then we do pushback. And I've had a lot of people say, I love the pushback section because, you know, automatically, especially in education, I've said this before. In fact, I just did a keynote in Boston. I said this. We tend to default as educators to, oh, no, that won't work because we're given so many things that don't work. So I think we're almost conditioned that way, you know, as to say, ah, that won't work because. So right away, someone says a, a mantra like this could get people fired. You know, they could be unemployed. My reply to that was better that than the other. And the other being that, you know, lecture, homework, punish, grade, because that's the way we've always done it. Uh, You know, and I don't want people to lose their jobs, of course. I think all educators have the best of intentions. And it's important to say that because, you know, when I do these these rants and this uncut version, you know, this is (laughs) there's a lot of ranting and sometimes complaining. And, uh, you know, I've had people say to me, you know, it's a lot of the stuff you say or write tends to be pretty negative. And, uh, you know, of course, I say, well, hey, <laughs> my, my company publishes the Hack Learning Series, and I think that's about as positive as it gets. But I do tend to push back because that's just what I'm conditioned to do. So I, I love educators. I think they're honorable. I think it's the greatest profession in the world. You know, I was a classroom teacher for about 23 years. I've taught at the college level. I, I publish books on education. I go around and talk to people about best practices. So I love teaching and learning, love teachers. But I do think that sometimes, you know, we're so caught up in this. That's the way we've always done it mentality that we just roll out our stuff. You know, it's like roll out the workbooks, roll out the textbooks and the boring back of the chapter questions and ask our kids to highlight and to summarize or to, you know, if they read a great book, what's the theme or to teach a novel, you know, over eight weeks and say, read this chapter tonight, but don't read past that chapter. These kinds of practices, go home and do 25 problems in math, the same ones, you know, and then label kids with these grades that just, you know, basically lie about achievement. And I, and I think it's, that's the way we've always done it. So we continue to do it. And the reason I post something like this is because I want people thinking. And when someone says, well, you know, that, that mantra could get people, many teachers could be unemployed if they use that. You know, I think there's, there's workarounds, first of all. I don't think that we have to get people fired. I'm not suggesting that we say, you know, we, we spit in the face of administration and say, uh, you know, I, you're saying I should hand out homework. I'll never do that. You know, you're saying that we have to have report card grades. Well, I'm not going to put a grade on my kids because we're going to continue to do those things. But there are workarounds. So I think what I'm trying to do is get people to think about their practice and reflect. You know, we're at that place in, in the year, you know, if you're listening to this at, at the time it goes live, uh, around the holiday season. And, you know, we reflect on what we do and we think of the year that's passed and we think of what's coming up and, you know, we get New Year's resolutions and all of that. So I think it's a great time to think about this stuff. So some other people, I, I got kind of the opposite response to the uh, the one about getting teachers fired on Facebook. Someone said, education's different now. Today, it's student-led, it's engaging, it's interactive. And, you know, we do so much of that in hack learning. Um, We've got Hacking Classroom Management coming out and and by Mike Roberts, and it's it's tremendous. It'll be out in December 2017. And that book is all about um, his ideas to become the kind of teacher they make movies about. And we, we talk about it at hashtag movie teacher on Twitter. But you know, what's cool about that is he suggests that classroom management, we don't really need it if we just create the right kind of environment. And, you know, when you see a movie where they, about teachers, usually those teachers are awesome. You're like, oh, I want to be like that. And and Mike Roberts writes all about how to do that. And, and he's been doing it for a very long time and presenting on it. And I think that's great. That's what we want. And that's what we promote in the Hack Learning series. But I don't see enough of it in education. And I think that's why we keep putting out books, you know, and and telling people, hey, let's look at these blueprints to be better. So when someone says education is different, we're we're doing it 
the right way, I think we have to qualify that. You know, some are for sure, but not nearly enough. And in fact, people replied right away on there and said, I would say this, this is done in very few places, this, you know, interactive, engaging, awesome environment. So, uh, you know, and, and then uh, some people suggested that lecture, if it's done right, is okay. And I said, you know, certainly 10 year olds don't want it, but, but some people might be okay with it. Someone came in and said, you know, we need more STEM and we need coding in school. And, uh, you know, we have to stop shoving the old way down kids' throats. And that got a lot of people talking again, you know, saying, well, STEM, is it just trendy or is it really a thing we need more of? Someone said, well, what, what about the humanities? What about philosophy, media literacy? And this sparked this amazing conversation and back and forth on social media about what we need to do to be better in the classroom and how we should be thinking about doing things in education that are progressive, that are engaging, exciting, that get kids to want to come in and and to love learning. And all of this started from a single post uh, that I just repeated something that I said and written often. You know, I won't lecture, assign homework, punish, or grade my students just because that's the way we've always done it. And I think this is what the, the message today, you know, and I think in, in the Hack Learning podcast, there may be some rants in our uncut version, but I think ultimately it's to, there, there's some sort of a, a strategy or advice or even a challenge to teachers, school leaders, parents to make them and their stakeholders, in most cases kids, better. And to me, I would say at the end of one year and when we're reflecting on what we've done, Heading into a new year and thinking about what we will do, I would challenge you to say, I'm going to look at everything I do. If I'm a teacher, if I'm a school leader, if I'm a parent, I'm going to look at what I do and I'm going to say, is this best for my kids? And if there's some sort of a policy or mandate around it, is there a way I can do it that might satisfy those administrators or school leaders and still be better for kids because we just don't want to say, yeah, I'm just going to do this because that's the way we've always done it. Hey, I'm Mark Barnes. Thanks for listening to Hack Learning. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Hack Learning Uncut with your host, Mark Barnes, an edu hacker who says you don't need another five-year plan. If you're crazy enough to want more, check out hacklearningpodcast.com. And read a hack learning book today, will you? The entire series is available at hacklearningbooks.com. <laughs>